Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me. As always, three things you can do to help the channel. That is like, subscribe, and please share the content. Donations can be made at paypal.me slash morelogmorningdigest. I'm going to jump right into the coronavirus update. I took a break this weekend just to clear my mind. We have had some developments over the weekend. We are over 40,000 confirmed cases right now. We are over 600 deaths reported. And it seems as though they have reached a limit in their testing. For the past several days, the numbers of new infected have been very, very, very consistent. Now, the reason I think this is happening is because they only have a certain amount of testing kits available per day. And on top of that, they can only get the results back for so many of these tests per day. And these tests lag about four days behind. So the fact that all of these numbers are coming out almost identical is no coincidence. And it's not because there's only 3,000 people getting sick. It's because there's only 3,000 tests that they can confirm every day. Now, we have other evidence that suggests the death rate in Wuhan is significantly higher than what they are telling us. Now, if you look at imaging from the area and you look at the gases that are being produced in Wuhan from this imaging, there has been a very sharp increase of SO2 being emitted from Wuhan to the point where it is very obvious from these images that measure these gases. Now, there's only one of two explanations for why there would be an excess amount of this gas being produced. One is the production of goods, right? Goods and services. Now, we all know that the city shut down. The other way that this gas could be produced is the burning of organic material, i.e. cremation. And in order for this amount of gas to actually be produced, there'd have to be far more deaths and cremations than they are reporting. So I'm going to let logic run its course there, and you guys can draw your own conclusion as to why that SO2 is at the level that it is at. Also, we have come to the realization that this thing is now being spread by aerosol transmission. This has come right out of China itself. And it explains why they have been fogging their streets for the past two weeks. And this just goes to show that they've had this information for a while and they're just now putting it out, which is kind of terrifying in all honesty, because I said a week and a half ago that this thing has already reached aerosol transmission. And it turns out that I was right about that as well. So what this means is, Instead of it being droplet form where you sneeze right and it lands on the ground and it can stay there for up to eight hours or so, now it can actually be transmitted through the air over vast distances. And I'm talking about like within local municipalities. I'm not talking about spreading over the ocean. You don't have to worry about that. But that also means that the infection rate and the infection possibility the transmission between people is going to be way higher than they originally forecasted. Very interesting developments coming out of Taiwan. So, the Taiwanese government contacted China and asked China if Taiwan could get their citizens out. Now, of course China can't say yes to this because they don't recognize the Taiwanese government as a government at all. They consider Taiwan part of China. However, we did see China end up letting the Taiwanese citizens leave. But what's really messed up about all of this is they were supposed to be taking out the most high-risk individuals, i.e. the old and the young, right? Now, the Chinese, in order to let the Taiwanese out, had to arrange for this to be done through a Taiwanese businessman and not the government. And of course, with China and Taiwan both being very corrupt places, this Taiwanese businessman didn't take the people out that were supposed to be taken out. And in fact, there was people on the manifest that landed in Taiwan that were actually already confirmed to have had the virus. Now, 
Let's talk about Thailand for a moment because we do have some interesting developments out of Thailand. The health minister of Thailand, he's the longest serving health minister that Thailand has ever had. He's revered by the people, 100%. Now, he announced the 11th confirmed case over the weekend and he did a press conference. During this press conference, this man broke down into tears. And later on, he ended up having a second broadcast doing the same thing. He broke down into tears a second time. Now, this man obviously has a lot weighing on his mind, right? More so than I could ever want to imagine myself having to deal with. And showing this vulnerability in front of that many people as a government official isn't something that you normally see. It's just nice to know that, yes, there actually is some humanity within some of these governments and some of these people actually care. Now, we do have our first confirmed death of a United States citizen inside of Wuhan. They were older and they did have health conditions. However, let's not, let's not take this as a light thing at all, okay? Because even though this person was older and they succumbed to it, you have to realize that there is a lot of people who are in good health that are succumbing to this and the media isn't telling us about this, okay? They just aren't. Now, in France, we have five people that all got the coronavirus as well. They were staying at a ski resort. They're all British citizens. And what happened is one of their people went to Singapore for a business meeting, came back, and ended up infecting all five of those people. What this goes to show us, even though it's anecdotal, right? Even though it's anecdotal, again, it shows us that the infection rate from all of these case studies is a lot higher than what they are telling us. This is the second time that we've seen this in the past week. The same thing happened with the father and son in Vietnam. The same thing happened in Germany. The human to human transmission is a lot more likely than what they are telling us. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> we do have health officials that have come out that are part of the World Health Organization that are saying it is only a matter of time before this reaches pandemic levels and the best that we can do is try to contain it for as long as possible. Now, that right there is a realization I want everybody to take seriously. If somebody from the World Health Organization is saying that, then it's more than likely gonna be the outcome that we're gonna see here. Now, this right here is definitely a case study we have to look at for the future. I'm not saying that the coronavirus isn't gonna reach pandemic levels and cause a lot of deaths. But what this tells us is, there is a very high likelihood that this is not, and I repeat, this is not the only pandemic we are gonna be facing in the near future. So what we can do here is learn as many lessons as we can from this and prepare ourselves for the inevitable. I've been saying that this was gonna happen for a very, very long time, okay? And it's probably gonna happen again because we see this trend over and over again. We saw SARS, we saw MERS, coronavirus, H1N1, et cetera, et cetera. The swine flu, it seems as though the threshold for these pandemics spreading seems to be decreasing as the years go on. Now, I want all of you to realize that I'm gonna keep covering this but it's taking a lot of energy for me to do so. And I never wanted this channel to grow because of an event like this. I'm gonna start focusing on the content that this channel was built for. So the updates are gonna come, but they are gonna be shorter. That is for sure. I can't keep doing this to myself. You guys have a good day. Take care of yourselves and your families. God bless, and I will talk to you soon.